Greetings, everyone. Welcome to a Let's Talk edition of the DC Current. I am your host, Damon Caskey. Now, I say let's talk because, really, I can't think of any other category to fit this into. I'd like to speak a bit about graphics. But when I say like to speak about and graphics, both of those are kind of a stretch because we're not really talking about the fun kind of graphics. In other words, no pixels, uh, no vectors, no shading, nothing like that. Instead, we're referring to infographics, the sort of thing that politicians, statisticians, pretty much anybody with a flair for numbers, access to design software, and a predilection for trying to change your mind loves to delve into. As for me, well, even my polysubjective curiosity has its limits, and I probably care about this subject even less than you do. So why do it? Well, why else for a grade? So, shall we begin? All right. Have any of the, some of the none of you ever heard of a content management system? If you have, I'm sorry, I still have to give you the dime tour. A content management system, or CMS for short, is more or less a pipe dream where we completely separate the content of a site from its technical aspects. In real world terms, okay, let's say we've got Sam the sales guy. Sam the sales guy has a quarterly report he has to make. Now, instead of emailing said quarterly report over to Tom the Tech, who takes care of the website, and then Tom the Tech puts it up for Sam, Sam is able to log in and post that quarterly report himself, and he doesn't need any tech knowledge to do it. Now, in reality, things aren't quite so simple. There's still a little bit of cross-pollination that has to go on, but today's content management systems do a good and better and better as time goes on job of obfuscating the code from the content. This come in many sizes, shapes, flavors, and colors. In fact, as a student, yours truly, or an instructor, actually yours truly at times, or you, you are using a content management system every time you log into Canvas. I, in fact, have authored several micro content management systems for various purposes. However, if you are a corporate CIO, a bean counter, or a small business owner looking to replace or even build a web presence with a content management system, you are almost certainly looking at one of the big three. Those are WordPress, Drupal, and Joomla. The first of these, WordPress, is a metaphorical software phoenix. Anybody remember right after the dot-com dark ages and just before we became Zuckerberg zombies? During that little transitory period of the early 2000s, everybody, their mother, their brother, their dog, and its puppies were running blogs. And that is where WordPress got its start. It was a blogging software. Of course, blogging proved to be a fad, and it's long since burned out, but out of those ashes, WordPress rose to become the most popular framework of any type in the entire world. Drupal has a similar backstory. It grew out of a message board system similar to vBulletin, PHP Nuke, or Simple Machines. Now, message boards didn't die quite as hard as blogs did, but they are certainly nowhere near as popular as they used to be, again, most likely thanks to social networking. Drupal, just like WordPress, managed to despecialize, and it is now the third most popular framework of any type. Lastly, we have Joomla. Now, Joomla, assuming I'm even pronouncing that correctly, <clears throat> excuse me, doesn't have any sort of dramatic backstory at all, because Joomla is the only of the big three that was designed from the ground up to be a content management system. Joomla is the Johnny-come-lately, but it enjoys a popularity second only to WordPress. Three CMS frameworks, three different sets of attributes. Now, it'd be nice to have a quick way to compare them without going through a massive and lengthy evaluation and testing. That's where the infograph comes in. I did mention at the beginning of this video that we were going to be talking about infographs, not so much CMS, and I also mentioned it was for a class assignment. Well, specifically, or rather the nickel version, once again, the class protocol called for taking two infographs and then combining them into a third, hopefully superior version. Of course, what is superior is very subjective, and everything that I say from here on out is just an opinion. Your mileage may vary. All right, as you can see, I have a screen in front of me. The reason for that is straightforward. We are about to delve into the analysis of the infographics themselves, and as we do so, just keep in mind, the infographics tend to be a little complex. My mental alacrity tends to be a little simple, and the end result, there's no way that I can remember what these things even look like, let alone do an analysis on them without a visual aid of my own. So just kind of bear with me there. The first thing I want to touch on is my selection criteria. 
there was really only one. That was neutrality. Infographics tend to be a little heavy on the persuasion and a little light on the info. Thankfully, I was able to find a couple of subjects that avoided that particular problem. Okay, let's start with our first subject. Let me just grab it here, pull it out, give it a little clap, expand, and we're ready to go. Let's take a look at my notes here and the graphic itself. Ah, it's coming back like Celine Dion. Okay, first problem. This thing is way too much graphic and it's not enough info. The next problem, notice how it's a little bit thin on this screen? That's because I scaled it to the screen itself. It is a very poor vertical to horizontal ratio. What that means is, were you looking at the actual graphic at full size, there is no way it would fit on your vertical screen, even on a high-res monitor like my laptop here. You have to scroll up and down. It is very, very busy, and the title bars are all over the place. So you put all that together, and what you get is an infographic that presents a lot more graphic, a lot less info, so it's more like a pictogram, and it's impossible to get a succinct read. In other words, it's useless. Now, it does have one good idea in it, and that is the best for suggestion. That's great, okay? So someone who, whether they have technical knowledge or lack of technical knowledge, they can still take a look and, oh, okay, well, this particular app is suitable for this situation. That idea we like, and we can use that. The rest of it we're going to ignore, so let me just grab it and smash it and push it back into the screen, and we will move on to our second subject. Scroll up for here. Grab hold of it, pull it out. I'll give this one a little flip. And as you can see, it has a much better horizontal to vertical ratio. It's going to fit within most screens. The information is still pretty eye-catching. It uses bold colors, but it's readable. The main flaws with this second infographic, though, is that it's got a lot of superfluous information. For instance, one that really stuck out to me is that it details the programming languages. Now well, that's not a bad idea on the surface until you realize that all three of them are using the exact same language. Also, you have to remember your audience here. The people looking at this are going to be one of two types. You're either going to have your CIOs, who already know what languages they're looking at anyway, or you're going to be a non-technical person, in which case the language is meaningless and you won't care. Still, it's a nice presentation, and we can use it as a template. So I'm going to grab both of these together. Okay, we'll take our second one here. Let me shrink it just a little bit. Let me pull our first one out. We'll kind of bring them side by side. And I'm going to gradually combine those together using the following seven points that I noted here. Okay, first, we want to combine setup and ease of use into a single metric. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the Facebook likes, okay? That doesn't say anything about the CMS or its market share. It's pointless and misleading at best. The third is that we're going to remove the programming language. All three of them use PHP, like I was saying earlier. There's nothing to compare. We'll move the established, i.e. the year they were developed, into the title of each item. We'll add a descriptive title because, well, again, we want people to be able to take a quick look and know exactly what they are looking at. Add the best four from our example on the left here, excuse me, on my left, your right. And the last thing we're going to do, it doesn't really affect the infographic design itself, but it's more of a practical issue, is we're going to reduce the color depth. Both of the infographs are in 24-bit RGB color. We're going to take that down to 8-bit color. So in other words, we're going to take 16 million colors and bring them down to 256. You'll notice we don't lose any graphic quality whatsoever, but it does lose, excuse me, but it does reduce load times and it's going to harden up the colors. So let me smash them together. You'll notice which one is dominant, obviously. And here is our new result. So while you're looking at that, um, well, as you can see, all, uh, all I've really done is just kind of whittled down some unneeded information and added one piece from the first subject. The result isn't too far from what we started with, but since the uh, second one gave us a good place to start, that's not a bad thing. 
We want it to be simple, concise, and hopefully informative. That's what a good infographic should be. Now let me take it down here. You know, just wad it up and throw it away for next time. All right, everyone. Thank you. And if you found this to be useful, entertaining, or perhaps some combination of both, I can't imagine why, but if you did, please throw me a like or subscribe. Your support is what keeps this sort of thing going. This is Damon Kasky signing out. Thanks for listening, everyone, and we will see you next time.